Welcome back to the show, everybody. And today we are going to be painting up a miniature, part of a miniature, using only two colors for the most part. A few weeks ago when I did a video explaining stippling, I mentioned that you can use a combination of stippling and ink washes to great effect. And that's what we're going to do today. This is a fairly easy to replicate technique. All it involves is stippling and washes, so you should be able to do it with fairly no problems. But let's get into it, shall we? So we're gonna be painting up this roguey guy's cloak, and I want a nice worn leather look. And we are gonna begin by base coating him with Beastie Brown. Beastie Brown is a good color for a natural leather look, and you can use this technique with almost any color, uh, but you want to use your base coat color. You don't want to start with a very dark color or a very light color. Pick something in the middle range. So if you're doing blue, for example, just pick a medium blue, and all you have to do is just base coat the entire surface. We're going to begin with stippling, just like we did in our previous video. And we are stippling brown sand all over our cloak. Now, two different things here. First of all, the brown sand is an extremely light color to be stippling over Beastie Brown. If this was regular stippling, regular highlighting we were doing, uh, I'd have some intermediate levels here, a mix of Beastie Brown and brown sand. However, in this case, I want something much, much lighter. Basically, whatever would be our final or one of our final highlights in a normal layering pattern. The second thing, this stippling is going pretty much everywhere except for the deepest, darkest recesses on the cloak. So we want a very uniform coat of stippling over the entire surface. For our second color in this process, I'm gonna be mixing two different ink colors because I want kind of a darker brown color. So I'm gonna take about 75% sepia ink and mix that with 25% black ink. This technique works much better using inks because they are naturally transparent. Also, I am virtually not thinning these at all. We're using them pretty much straight out of the bottle, maybe added a drop of water, but that is about it. Next, we apply our wash. We want to do this in a smooth, even coat. We don't want it pooling in the recesses. And you can see here how much the ink wash is darkening the surface of our cloak. That's very important. If we were applying a regular wash, this would be much thinner. We would want it just in the recesses and not painted overall darkening our base coat color, but we are doing the opposite this time around. For our next step, we return to our brown sand once again, and once again, going with our stipple pattern, the difference here is we're not putting it on such a broad surface area as the first stipple layer of brown sand. It's best to think of this as your second highlight. So we are drawing up our highlight here, putting in a slightly smaller area, moving away from the recesses, moving away from the base coat areas, working our way towards those highlights, those crisp edges, those high areas on the miniature that are really gonna catch the light. And then once again, we return to our sepia ink and black ink wash exact same recipe that we just used a few minutes ago once again being applied in a smooth even coat all over the cloak and then once again we return to our brown sand again this time 
we are working on a smaller and smaller area. Those big folds on the back of the cloak, very good example, working our way towards that sharp edge, that's really gonna catch the light. By now, I'm sure you figured out what is going on. We are getting a lot of variety in our shades and highlights, even though we are only using two coats of paint or one coat of paint and one coat of ink because as we apply each additional stipple, we're doing it in a smaller area, but the wash is continually going over those areas we previously painted. So the deep recesses have now gotten three washes. The secondary, the base coat areas have gotten two washes. The upper highlight areas have gotten one wash. So as we go deeper into the recesses, they're becoming darker and shaded more simply by reapplying the same color of wash. For our final application of brown sand in this wash stipple wash cycle, you can see here we're working a very small area now just on the edges of all those folds in the cloak. And then once again, we reapply the exact same sepia black ink wash. This one I did a little bit thicker. I let it pool in the recesses a little bit more because I realized wasn't getting quite enough shade there. So I just applied a little bit of an excess wash so it could dry naturally in the recesses. And then we finish off with one final application of brown sand. This is basically our edging stage where we want to pick out the edges of the cloak. Once again, stippling this on, not going around every edge surface, just stippling on here and there to show that crisp detail on the edge and to finalize our stipple pattern, show our kind of frayed, worn leather on the edges. Perfect place for it. And there we go, one finished cloak using only two colors over and over again. Well, two colors, if you don't count the beastie brown, you can see why I didn't count it because we only had to apply that once. Even though we're only using two colors, you can see all the variation in color that we have on the cloak. It has a beautiful texture to it. And all we did was stipple and wash. It can't get more simple than that. You can do this with a variety of colors. Just keep in mind doing very, very light colors or very, very dark colors. Uh, you don't have as much range to go in with the washes, so I would stick with medium tones. But at any rate, you can do with red, blue, green, what have you. So that is it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you like and support and do all those things to keep me going. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. There goes a stupid, stupid man.